Yes. Uh, you see, in the summary financial statements, if they are like if at all on the audited financial statement, suppose we gave adverse opinion or disclaimer, why we don't give opinion on summary financial statements? So that's a doubt. Very simple. Suppose uh, you are for you 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 took you you brought to me one chart book example or revision notes or something, which is prepared from very old material which is not at all relevant under the new scheme. Now you are coming and asking me whether can I follow this chat book which is prepared from so and so. First of all the main source itself is wrong. Tell me what should I tell you on the chat book now. I should directly say don't follow. If I have to say don't follow what, what, what is the best option for me let me not give opinion. I will say that I will not give opinion. Why we deny opinion on the summary financial statements derived from the audited financials on which we have given adverse opinion or disclaimer because we want them not to use it. Because we want them not to use it. Now, okay, I, I want them not to use it. Can I say they are not consistent? They are consistent. The notes which you prepared, chart notes, is 100% matching with the main material, but the main material itself is irrelevant. So they are consistent. I cannot give adverse opinion on this. So tell me, I cannot give adverse opinion and I cannot give a proper opinion that you are consistent. What should I do? That's why denial of opinion. Leo. <coughs> Fine. 805 will begin. <coughs> so, what are the special considerations? Audit of single financial statements, specific element, account, or item of financial statements. Somebody has asked me, can we take stock audit as an example here? Yes, you may take. The stock audit is what? Audit of a specific element or item of the financial statement. Suppose, if that stock statements are prepared using special purpose framework, then 800 also apply. Now, when you are doing audit of single financial statement or specific element or item of the financial statements, what are the special things that you should consider? See, if it is complete set of the financial statements, there are many standards that are addressing the issue. So, no special thing that you need to consider. But you are doing audit of a single financial statement or a specific element or an item or an account of the financial statement. What specifically you should look into here? So, first of all, this is not this is something a statutory engagement. An audit of single financial statement or a specific element might be performed. First of all, why the entity prepared that specific element separately? Why the entity prepared single financial statement separately? First of all, what is the reason? Uh, there must be somebody, a specific user. Getting the point. And this single financial statement, suppose if it is prepared using established frameworks, general purpose framework, then it's a general purpose single financial say general purpose single financial statement. So I can comfortably do audit of that and then give opinion easily. But if the financial statement is prepared based on a specific user requirement, that single financial statement, only cash flow statement is asking, not anything else. Only cash flow statement is asking. An investor want to invest in our entity. He don't want to see what is the profit as for profit and loss. He want to see cash flow from operating activities. How much is the cash that you generated from operating activities he want to see. So he want to see the net results. Only in the cash results he want to see. <coughs> so this is a user requirement. For that reason, we are doing audit of. For that reason, entity prepared a cash flow statement, separate cash flow statement for the user requirement. On that, they are asking me to give an opinion. Are you getting it? So, can I give an opinion on this? First of all, it depends upon various factors. Depends upon various factors. And remember, by the way, in 800, 805, 800, all in all these cases, they are all dealing with historical financial information. They are not dealing with prospect. The moment it comes to prospect to 3000 cents. It is not going for 800. <coughs> so, the single financial statements may be prepared in accordance with a general framework or special framework. If at all prepared in accordance with special purpose framework, 800 is also applicable. But remember, 805 does not apply to a report of a 
component auditor issued as a result of work performed on the financial information component at the request of the group engagement team for the purpose of audit of group financial statements. This is not dealing with, you know, don't confuse between a single financial statement and component financial statements. That's what they are trying to tell. If at all, in the consolidated financials, component is component related financial information is included, which is audited by another auditor. 804 is not dealing with that. Able to understand? <coughs> now, the, the standard is talking about when you can accept this, how to plan and perform this, how to form an opinion. But remember, this is not dealing with internal controls. This 805 do not have any objective for you to express opinion on the operating effectiveness of internal controls. Now, what is a single financial statement? A single financial statement is obviously different from complete set. You see, here they are not using the word audited financials. Actually, we can use, not wrong. But since you are using single, the contrary word is what? Better word to comparison complete. Okay? And includes related notes, ordinary capitalizing, significant accounting policies, expert information relevant for the financial, single financials. A single financial statement also we give notes to account. In that notes, we mention how the single financial statement or element is prepared. We mention our accounting policy, what we used. Suppose somebody has asked me creditors information. Only creditors data, creditors aging analysis, complete report they asked me. A banker has asked me. You show me creditors reconciliation, how you paid, when you purchased all that a separate element. And I gave creditors detailed summary. Then I gave notes to accounts in depth summary, in depth information I've given. On this, banker has asked me to give an audit report also. Fine. So, whatever the specific element or item the entity is preparing, whatever single financial statement the entity is preparing, for the doctor it has notes. Remember, notes to accounts is nothing but explanation for whatever information I've included in. Main, <coughs> Main statements. Correct? Huh? So what is an element, by the way? Single financial statement and element. In this entire standard, they use the word single financial statement and element. They don't just use the word single financial statement or they just don't use the word element on it. Because the standard is dealing with audit of single financial statement, element, item or account. Whether you call it as element, whether you call it as item, whether you call it as account, both the same, all, the, all are synonymous. They can be used interchangeably. What is an element of financial statement? Inventory is an element. Or you can say inventory is an item. Inventory is an account. So no. These three are interchangeable depending on the context. Clear? So what is an element? Element of financial statement means an element, account or item of a financials and includes related notes which ordinarily contains explanation to the element. Now when you are accepting the engagement you just have to see is it practicable for you to audit of single financial statement or element? Is it is it practicable or not? If it is not practicable you will not. Sometimes no. Suppose company asks me sir you just come and do balance sheet audit alone. That's it. p and and all don't touch. Hello, how can I do balance sheet audit without verifying p and are you getting the point? Suppose you know, a company asks me, sir, just to do resistance surplus audits. Whether our resistance surplus are true and fair or not, you tell me. The resistance surplus profit and loss account balance is there. Whether it is true and fair or not, I need to check PL audit. If I have to check PL, I need to do all the transactions audit. And all the balance sheet complete, complete things will be involved, interrelated. Is it practicable? Check. And see whether you can comply with ethical requirements, all the standards. And it also requires an auditor to comply with each requirement of SA unless that SA is completely irrelevant. So when you are doing audit of single financial statement or relevant whatever it is, you have to comply with all standards on auditing. If at all, sometimes you may judge it is necessary to depart from a standard. In such a case, how alternative audit procedure you performed achieves the aim of the standard. This is something there in the preface of the standard itself. Preface of EQC, Engagement and Quality Control Standard pronouncement introduction itself, it is there. The same thing they copied here. Especially, but all you are not the one complete set financial statements are audited. Somebody have audited or complete set financial, complete set of the financial statements were not at all audited. In that case, single financial statement audit becomes much more challenging. So, compliance with requirement of standards of a specific element of the financial statements may not be practicable or a single financial statement may not be practicable when auditor is not engaged to audit the complete set. The auditor often does not have same understanding of the entity and its environment when you are doing audit of complete set. 
you will not have that much understanding when you are doing audit of single financials. The auditor does not have evidence about general quality of accounting records, qualitative practices, quali I mean, entities accounting practices, or how far they are qualitative, you will not have an understanding. In some cases, specific element audit no, they require audit work that is disproportionate to the element. You are asking me to do audit of results and surplus, where you are giving me one day, two days time. Yes, this is surplus one item only, no? But you don't know the fact that in results and surplus, p and balance is there. <coughs> if I have to say that p and balance is right or wrong, I have to verify all the revenue items and all expense items. The auditor concludes that compliance with the standards on auditing may not be practicable when discharging audit on single financial statement or specific element. Discuss with management another type of engagement. Nothing but discuss with management say that sir. This single financial element, single financial statement or specific element audit is not practicable for me because I cannot, I will be failing to do comply with the many standards on auditing if you insist me to do it in three, four days. Not possible for me. Management, so what is the alternative? Do one thing, I'll do complete set audit. You appoint me for complete set audit, I'll do. If I have audited complete set, then I can give single financial statement or specific element opinion also if you want. These are all just additional reports. If at all I have audited complete set, these are all just the reporting requirements for me. No special work is required. <coughs> this itself can be asked as a question. What are the considerations when accepting audit of single financial statement? Especially when auditor has not audited complete set of the financial statements. They will give you a question like this. What are the considerations the auditor has to consider when he is appointed to do audit of single financial statement when he is not audited? Complete set. You need to write these, these sub points, four points you have to write. You able to understand. Next. Not only that, the next thing that you need to consider before accepting an audit of single financial statement or specific element. By using which framework? By using what rules and regulations they prepared the single financial statement? They prepared specific event. What framework they used? Whether the framework used will result in presentation that provides adequate disclosure so that users can understand the information conveyed in the single financial statement. A single financial statement or specific element which is prepared in accordance with applicable framework which is established by authorized standard setting organization. Suppose if at all a single financial statement or specific element is prepared as per Schedule 3. Though it's a single cash flow but we still followed Schedule 3 requirement. We followed accounting standard requirement. Though we presented red receivable straight payable data, we presented same data as per Schedule 3. If at all single financial statement or specific element is prepared as per recognized framework, the risk that the single financial statement or specific element will be misleading will reduce. Correct? You have seen it earlier. Fine, right? Considerations when planning and performing the audit of single financials, especially. So, what you will consider when you are planning to perform the single financial statement audit? You need to comply with all standards on auditing. But all you have been, you have been doing audit of complete set or previous year audits or something. You can use evidence obtained in previous years. Just as you just have to update the evidence. And with respect to the single financial statement or element, obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. And sometimes, no, when you are doing audit of the specific element, it is interrelated with. Suppose company asked me to comment genuinity of trade receivables. It is linked with sales. Sales are properly accounted. Trade receivables will be fine. So interrelated items also I should verify. Any interrelated item is there? I must verify that interrelated item. And materiality and evaluation. Remember, materiality will change you. Generally, the materiality which will apply for complete set of the financial statements is different from, from some specific element. Look at the requirement of the user. Based upon that, you can decide materiality. Fine. All these points, whatever I have told, incorporate in the terms of engagement. Incorporate in the terms of engagement. And in case of fair presentation framework, you will just mention that. <coughs> Sorry, here they just have given they just see SA 210 requires that the agreed terms of audit engagement include expected form of any reports to be issued. The auditor shall consider whether expected form of the report is expected form of the opinion is appropriate in the circumstance. Whether on the single financial statement or specific element, you will be giving opinion ultimately. In which format you will give opinion? 
you will give something similar to SA 700 format only. In SA 700 format only, you will give format in the sense not structure, opinion wording sometimes. Suppose if there is no specific framework for single financial statement or element, if there is no explicit, suppose a single financial statement or specific financial statement, the applicable framework not explicitly address the presentation of that statement or element, where applicable financial reporting framework is mainly dealing with the completion of the financials. Suppose in the our schedule 3 account extended, you see all of them are mainly dealing with complete set only. They are not dealing with single financial statement or specific element. Therefore, auditor considered whether expected form of opinion is fine in light of applicable framework. Suppose if the company prepared single financial statement as per Schedule 3 only. Specific element they prepared as per Schedule 3 only. But Schedule 3 is not drafted in that manner. Auditor has to consider it. Okay. Is it not misleading? Auditor has to consider it. So here, wordings. Uh, this is not that required. <coughs> now you see forming of an opinion and reporting for single financial statement or element same person if at all audited completes it if the auditor undertakes the engagement to report on single financial statements in conjunction with the complete set of the financial statements the auditor must express a separate opinion for each sing each engagement they both are treated as two engagements so you will give a separate audit report on single financial statements are relevant, you will give a separate audit report on completion of the financial statements, both are two different engagements. That is the first requirement. And suppose, if at all audited single financial statement element, audited, sorry, audited complete set of the financial statements are published together. If they are published together and if, if auditor concludes that Presentation of single financial statement is not differentiated properly from complete set. If at all the single financial statement and complete set, they both are given to the user together. And user will feel like both are same. He will not feel that they both are two different documents. He is asked management to rectify that situation. The auditor shall also differentiate the opinion on single financial statement from the opinion given on complete set. You see, I will show you in 8.5 how we mention all this. See here, we mentioned that we have audited accompanying only balance sheet and summary of significant accounting policies that are dealing with the balance sheet. Together, we call here as financial statements. Management is responsible for presentation and fair presentation in accordance with so and so. So, here the balance sheet is prepared using regular framework. Our responsibility is to express opinion on the financials based on our audit. We conduct our audit in accordance with standards and issued by ACA. Those standards require all the so and so. And you mentioned that an audit involves performing procedures to get evidence on these amounts. The procedures depends upon risk assessment of the auditor. The auditor considers if the internal control, there are appropriate in circumstance, all that. Opinion. In our opinion, the financial statements present true and fair view in accordance with so and so, all that. See, sometimes, no, the single financial statement is restricted from distribution. Now, if at all, the single financial statement is presented not as per regular framework, but as per some other framework designed by management. And of course, in the single financial statement which they prepared, they will present what, what method they followed. That we need to highlight. How we will highlight here? Not emphasis of matter paragraph. We will use a separate paragraph called basis for accounting paragraph. Without modifying our opinion. I am not modifying my objection. I am not having any objection. We draw your attention to note number 10 to the financial statement. Which financial statement is complete on a single financial? No, single financial. History. Okay. Which describes the basis of accounting. On what basis this single element, this single financial statement or specific element, on what basis it is prepared? So the basis is given in so and so. You see, here we will say, we will inform that in our opinion, the financial statement present true and fair view in accordance with the cash disease and disbursement basis of accounting described in. Note number two, as per the method of, as per the basis of accounting described in single financial statement or element, 
This single financial statement is prepared and it is to that. On what basis it is prepared? Not general, general purpose framework, not company center schedule 3. There is a separate rules which the company followed. Where are they? Not number so and so. Now sometimes these single financial statements, no, they are restricted for distribution also. If at all they are restricted for distribution, you should mention the fact clearly that it should not be distributed to parties other than ABC insurance or regulator purpose. Getting it? Our report may not be suitable for another purpose. So we will just have to highlight on what basis we prepare and for whom it is useful. If at all the single financial statement or specific element is prepared for a particular user and it is not useful for others and it is restricted for distribution, we must mention this. Most of the audit of single financial statements will have this in reality. Look, single financial statements, specific elements, special purpose financial statement, review, all these are mostly confidential. Review is not of course. Getting it? Review of SA2400 is confidential again. 2410 is not. Because 2410 is interim financials which is filed with SEBI. That is a public document. 2400 review of historical financial statements. Getting it? That is that may be a special purpose which may be confidential. ACA 800, 8058 and all are confidential engagements. They are not public engagements. Leo. Next. <coughs> this is the complicated part. Not complicated, confusing part. I don't know how many of you have understood this. Suppose on the complete set of the financial statements, on the complete set of the financial statements, auditor has given a modified opinion or auditor has given emphasis of matter paragraph or other matter paragraph. So what should I do on the single financial statement? If the opinion in auditor's report on the complete set is modified, which includes an emphasis of matter paragraph or other matter paragraph or maybe a modified opinion, what is its effect on the auditor's report on the single financial statements? You check. If it is appropriate, please modify the opinion on single financial statements and include an emphasis of matter paragraph also or other matter paragraph in the audit report on single financials. By what reason in the completion of the financial statements audit report is given? So a modified opinion is given. If a similar reason is also present, the specific element, suppose in the completion of the financial statements inventory is misstated and the company prepared a separate inventory statement for the purpose of bank care, banker's purpose. On that inventory quarterly statement, we have to give an audit report. If the inventory value is materially misstated in the complete set, the same inventory is what they presented here also. It's relevant. I will also give modified opinion on single financial statement element. Got it? Suppose. Okay, if it is qualified opinion, emphasis or all that, it is fine. What if I give an adverse opinion on complete set? What should I do? If at, all, if at all I have given adverse opinion on complete set and we know that in 705 we have seen this point. If we have expressed an adverse opinion or disclaimer of opinion on the complete set of the financial statements, we should not give an unmodified opinion on a single financial statement or a specific element right up in the financial set, same audit report. The same audit report where he said every finance, as a whole financials are not true and fair. Then we say as a whole the financials are not true and fair. With respect to a single item, you should not give unmodified opinion. That's why you see, you don't give opinion separately on balance sheet, separately on PNL, separately on cash flow. We say as a whole, pervasively, substantial mistake is there in PNL. We say that entire financials are bad. We don't say that cash flow is right, balance sheet is right, or PNL is right. That's a requirement in. 705. Okay. Suppose on the complete set of the financial statements, we only audited or somebody have audited, whatever it is. We have given an adverse opinion. But the company has prepared an inventory statement separately for the purpose of filing with a bank account. For which company appointed me separately for audit of inventory again. Now I felt inventory is not a major item. Moreover, in the complete consolidate, sorry, in the complete set of the financial statements, we gave adverse opinion, right? That adverse opinion is in relation to debtor's value. 
that adverse opinion is in relation to loans value where there is a substantial material misstatement on inventory the auditor has obtained everything genuine opinion genuine evidence at all he obtained but since substantially these two are pervasive auditor gave an adverse opinion technically speaking on inventory he don't have objection but what he can do pervasively mistake is that he, he should say that don't believe this balance sheet don't <coughs> don't take a decision so he gave the opinion now company asked sir inventory no mistake right you can give an unmodified opinion i will do that is explicitly to the item specific element is not a major item in the fund getting it <coughs> if these two conditions are mainly satisfied in a separate audit report that to remember that sing specific element i am doing as a separate audit in a separate audit report given on inventory okay which is not a major item in the financials and which is also compulsory for me it is permitted under the law it is permitted under the regulation there is no prohibition in the law or regulation getting it then i will give a separate opinion where unqualified opinion able to understand suppose no company asked me sir inventory is correct no why separate audit all that you put emphasis of matter paragraph and say that inventory is not materially stated say same audit report why to take sir this itself i will give it to the bank same audit report i know you gave adverse opinion on the overall financials in the same audit report emphasis you mentioned about inventory and say that our opinion is not perfect i will prove this to, the, to i mean prove this to the banker so so that i will not have to pay separate fee sorry sir we are not permitted under 705 the same audit report we are, we are not supposed to use a contradictory wordings if you want i will do a separate audit for inventory and i'll give a separate audit report because it is not a major item and no prohibition in law i will give an unqualified opinion on a separate inventory alone for which i will charge a separate fee here is the point next so especially if single financial statement element is a major item in complete set can not do so on the single financial statement and element also you must give adverse opinion only if complete set of the financial statements are given adverse opinion if complete set of the financial statements we give disclaimer on single financial also we should give disclaimer however suppose in complete set of the financial statements we gave modified nothing but adverse opinion or disclaimer but you know on single financial statements we can give unmodified when if that single financial statement is not a major item now first of all there is no prohibition in law like this yes on complete set adverse opinion is there on single financial side can give unmodified opinion like that there is no prohibition in law you see in the same audit report there is a prohibition from the standard but in different audit report it is not talking so technically speaking there is no prohibition in law not only that the opinion expressed in the audit report is not published together with audit report containing adverse the inventory statement which i am giving unqualified opinion that and the overall financials where i said everything is bad is not published up together and the specific element on which i wanted to give unqualified opinion does not constitute major portion these three conditions are satisfied like <coughs> giving an unqualified opinion in a separate report on the specific element is not prohibited and the specific element or single financial statement is not published together with complete set on which we gave an adverse opinion and the specific element on which we want to give an unmodified opinion hearing it is not a major item these three conditions are satisfied on that single financial statement or element auditor can still give unqualified opinion even though on the complete set there is an adverse opinion what clarity this question can be asked sometimes i will be forgetting while teaching in the class that how it will be asked but you remember i hope you got the pulse of asking you understood the pulse how the test next finally in the single financial statement we should check adequacy of presentation and disclosure if at all presentation and disclosure is not adequate in single financial statement we give modified opinion on the single financial statement <coughs> when <coughs> when modified opinion on the entity complete set does not relate to audited financials or audited element suppose in complete set no qualified opinion or something is but that is not in mod in complete set modified opinion is given qualified opinion or adverse whatever on the specific element we are giving unqualified opinion 
we should mention this fact in audit report also that he gave unqualified opinion on the specific element but remember in the complete set qualification and all were there but that is not related to this item you should highlight it so under emphasis of matter paragraph or other matter paragraph you need to mention that the qualification qualification does not relate to audited single financial statement or element the auditor may still deem it appropriate to refer to the modification in other matter paragraph in an audit report on financial statement or element because it is relevant for the very simple when you are giving opinion on the single financial statement when you are giving audit report on the single financial statement or specific element whatever you are giving unmodified opinion okay fine also for a comparison sake on complete set what opinion auditor gave just if at all on complete set auditor gave qualified adverse whatever on what he qualified and adverse you just prefer here you just highlight it under other matter paragraph why other matter paragraph why not emphasis because i am talking about i am referring to the financial statements that is not in the single financial statement that information that is in something else other than matters presented or disclosed in the single financial statement i am talking which matter i am talking the matter which is presented in some auditor's report understand that's why they have used the word emphasis or other matter suppose no in the single financial statement itself company voluntarily declared on complete set no auditor have given opinion like that in the single financial statement notes itself company declared now you can highlight <coughs> this is not permitted itemized opinion on complete set of the financials can we give a, a separate opinion on cash flow and balance sheet and a separate opinion on pnl there is no permission for that in india we have to just give as a whole opinion that's it the entire standard is over and they have given one more thing 800 805 do not overrate the requirement of other scs nor they do purport to deal with all special considerations that may be relevant for the engagement so generally in 800 805 what are the special things you focus on that is only they are not overriding other standards and auditing you have to do audit as per other standards only you can use them see when you are doing audit of single financials or specific element whatever you can use risk assessment procedure and all as given under even five no that's it the chapter is over 800 we'll discuss uh, you know after break confident now you see 800 becomes damn easy okay.